Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I've been really anxiously waiting and also dreading getting this fountain pen. I ordered a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero fountain pen from Yoast at Applebaum about five weeks ago. It wasn't in stock at the time and Applebaum had to wait five weeks for the pen to come from Italy. I say I was anxious to get it, but also dreading getting it at the same time. Let me explain that. I used to think this hobby was just about fountain pens. I mean, it's just a pen, right? How much controversy could there be in fountain pens? I mean, it's not like these are guitars, like Gibson's, Fender's, or Martin's, where people get into knock-down, drag-out fights about which is better, let alone arguments about those Eastern brand knockoffs. Or is it? Well, my friends, it is exactly the same. It's silly, but it's true. A number of months ago, Moon Man came out with a lovely pen, the M800. It had a German-made Bach nib and was, for a Moon Man, expensive at about 50 bucks. I held off and waited for the $25 one with the Chinese nib. Then I got one with a Bach nib just to see if it was worth the extra 25 bucks. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. In the meantime, I swapped out the so-so Moonman nib for my favorite pen BBS nib, and this pen became my best writer in my collection. Then I start seeing all the hoopla, fiddly dee, brouhaha, and hullabaloo, pardon my French, about Moonman ripping off a pen with seven, count them, seven names, the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii. Well, inquiring minds want to know, which is better? A $250 Italian pen with a German Bach steel nib, or a $50 Chinese pen with exactly the same German Bach steel nib that draws its inspiration from said Italian pen. Check that. It doesn't have any inspiration at all. It's a straight-up copy of the Italian pen. So, I used the first money I received from the monetization of my YouTube channel to buy an Italian original. And I was dreading finding out the answer. Is the Italian original worth the extra 200 bucks? Well, the pen has arrived, and I will answer that question in another video, because too much has happened with just this pen alone to talk about the comparison. I'll talk about it, just not right now, in a couple of days. Please feel free to use the chapters feature to skip through the nib tinkering, or down here, and get to the actual review proper, which is about 20 minutes in. Sorry. A lot happened after I got this box. Curious to see what happened? Well, let's find out right now. So, an interesting day. The same day that the waterman goes to France, this package has come from the Netherlands. And this is the real version of this. So let's open the box. And what we have is a nice big green box from Applebaum. Thank you, Yoast. He was very, very pleasant. Personal correspondence. And it is taped shut. go. Let's see what's in the box. Ooh, Throop Raffle. And we have a very, very 60s looking package from Apple Boom. So we're going to have to break that seal. And we have Memento Zero Collection, Handmade in Italy, Fatto a Mano in Italia. My Italian is bad as my French. Leonardo Officina Italiana. Memento Zero Hawaii DORM. Now, some of you may know that I ordered a broad nib as well. That arrived 
within a couple of days, but this was five weeks getting it from Italy to Yoast. And here we have a very nice inner sleeve with shiny embossed lettering, Leonardo Officina Italiana. Well, that's very nice. A little padded faux leather, a little coffin box with no markings on it whatsoever. And here we have Leonardo Officina Italiana and the crest and a card with probably information. Made in Italy and the Memento Zero collection. Some nice photos, a little bit of information. But that's not what we're here for. This is what we're here for. And there's the pen. I've got to say that I've been a little bit nervous about how this pen is going to compare with my non-Leonardo Galaxy. And I was worried that the $200 price range difference between this one and the inspired version wouldn't come up to that mark of being worth it. There's the engraving. Leonardo Officina Italiana, number 1975. Let's see, what was I doing in 1975? Oh, that's right, I was wearing plaid pants. They are numbered, but they are not limited. And the chatoyance and the depth of that resin is quite beautiful. The interesting thing about the Blue Hawaii is that it has sand and water. And let's look at the nib. Leonardo Officina Italiana with the wings and a medium. Section on screws. And there is the very interesting Leonardo converter, which you can access by taking the blind cap off. Of course, we will clean this out, ink it up and put it through its paces. And I'll be back with a full review. So I thought I should document this. At the same time as I bought the Leonardo, I bought this uh, broad nib replacement for the medium as well. So I thought I'd, because they were with combined shipping, this was only like 20 bucks. So this is the nib I haven't tried yet. This is the medium that came with the pen today. And this is the broad that I've had for about, gee, four weeks or so. You can tell that there's a lot of tipping material there, but I'm also noticing there's some substantial baby's bottom on this as well. I thought I'd show what I'm getting out of this pen. This is a broad, mind you. It doesn't feel like a broad at all. In fact, side to side, and I was starting to get some skipping with it as well. This doesn't feel like a broad nib. It feels more like a fine to me. It's a very fine line. So I'm going to swap that out for the medium and see how it does. So here is the medium. Let's see how it does. Well, this one's skipping as well. So right out of the box, I'm not impressed. This is uh, Robert Oster fire and ice and very very dry so um, both nibs they write about the same this one's got a lot more issues than the broad did the broad seemed to get a little bit better 
as I wrote with it, but we'll have to see if I can tune that nib up a bit. Okay, so um, what I did just now was tried the broad and then tried the medium. And I had issues with both of them, feeling like a lot of baby's bottom. The medium feels worse than the broad, but I did all that without even looking at the nib. Now, ordinarily I would look at the nib with my loop, but I thought let's have the pure out of the box experience and see how this uh, uh, $230 uh, pen behaves right out of the box because we want to make a straight up comparison. So now that I've been rather disappointed out of the box with both nibs, I put it under my loop and this is what I see. And can you see that? That is a misaligned nib. Now, that's not a big deal for me. I see these all the time in uh, many of the Chinese pens um, because they don't do a lot of quality control. So you'll get a nib that has the tines bent out of shape like that. It's not a lot, but it's enough to make that medium write horribly. And I also noticed that the, the um, nib was not aligned with the feed. So I've, I've pulled it around a little bit. I have not taken this nib out of the collar. I've taken it out of the section, of course, in the nib unit. I've not taken it out of the collar at all or adjusted it other than just now to align it a little bit better by adjusting that the way I ordinarily do to get the nib back in alignment. And it's just as easy as doing that. Just gently hold it for 20 seconds or so. Metal tends to have a memory. Now let's look at it again. Still slightly out of alignment. So for those of you that commented that I have girly fingers, thank you very much. I deleted your post, but I don't have girly fingers. I have guitar fingernails and they come in very handy. Especially that thumb picking nail of mine comes in very, very handy. Not only for my bass E string, but also for doing nib adjustment like this. Now it's starting to come back into line a little bit better. I'm hoping I didn't just void my warranty, but don't you think this nib should have come out of the factory with those tines in alignment? A little bit better than that? I think so. Well, that's a lot better, as you would expect. Not quite as wet as I would like it, but it's getting there. Again, the point of trying it out of the and then it's hard starts. I'm getting a couple of hard starts. So that's see the top of that stroke. There, see top of the stroke is absent. That's baby's bottom. You see that little baby's bottom right there, right there. And I would think that this nib should have been polished and the tines aligned before it went into the box. Just my two cents worth anyway, my $230 worth anyway. So I wrote Yoast yesterday and told him about the two nibs that I bought with the Momento Zero. Uh, he has given me permission to work on these nibs a little bit to see if I can get them into writing fashion. And uh, if not, he will replace them for me. That's terrific customer service. Responded to my emails very, very quickly. Again, my problem isn't with Applebaum. It is with uh, Leonardo. In the meantime, what I did was to get a pen that actually writes. This is the Bach number six nib that came with my Moonman M800 Amber. This nib is a Bach number six. And as I understand it, these are Bach number six as well. They're just not branded as such. They're branded Leonardo. So I thought, well, let's get the pen writing with a Bach number six. So the pen actually writes very nicely. So this is the Leonardo of Italiana 
momento zero blue Hawaii with a well, maybe it's a medium it's hard to tell it might be a medium but it's the Bach number six and as you can see it's very wet but since I've been given the go-ahead by Yoast let's try to fix these two memento zeros so the first thing I want to do here is focus in on my first writing experience this was the broad and this is how it wrote it wrote very thin this is a fine up here this is the broad and you see it's missing the entire top of the B and then I went side to side and it kept, the line disappeared there you can see the line disappeared disappeared here and then I swapped the nib for the medium and the medium wrote a little bit broader than the broad which was odd then I tried to so well let's just keep writing with it this is the line that I got here this is the medium Leo nib it is almost that word there is impossible to write with as you can see and what's most pronounced on the broad is that there's a lot of baby's bottom on that so I'm going to try to not grind this but I'm going to try to um, grind off some of that baby's bottom so that I have a, a smooth and broad tip the medium has the same issue there's this kind of an effect going on where those are the two tines of the nib and we're getting this kind of a V right in there so what I want to do is take that off so that my my nib is flat on the page with both of these nibs and see whether that will suffice so that's what we're going to do and I'm going to start by using 1800 grit micro mesh and then move up through 2400 3200 6000 8000 and 12000 but most of the work is going to be done here with the 1800 I'm going to grind off that baby's bottom and then once I've ground it off of course the, it will leave a very rough surface moving up through 2400 what we're doing is taking the grinding marks from the 1800 grit and polishing them out so it's smooth so I'll just drop a little bit of water on there so I'm just going to be basically scratching off some tipping material and because it happened on the upper parts of the strokes I'm gonna and that baby's bottom seems to be just on the tip I have my pen angle fairly high here and I'm gonna keep checking with my loop to see how I'm doing I'm starting to rock it back and forth a little bit some of that baby's bottom you see some of it's disappearing now that V is not as pronounced there we go it's starting to disappear look at that flat spot right there not a flat spot but it's starting to that V is starting to disappear I think I might try to polish this out now so let's move up I'm gonna move up to 2400 we are polishing out the scratches by putting finer scratches and finer scratches into the surface and move up to 32 and the scratchy sound gets less pronounced it's starting to look a lot better already now we're gonna move up to 6,000 we're really into polishing now turning the nib high angle figure eights turning the nib and we're going to go up to 8,000 this has no sound to it at all and finally 
put it into the 12,000, which is our super polisher. And it hardly feels like you're doing anything. Well, with just water, that's feeling very, very broad and very, very wet very very smooth so I might have succeeded here so I'm going to ink this up and give it a try okay here we go well that's very smooth still getting a couple of hard starts on the top Very smooth, and I'm getting a broad line, but I'm starting to see there's a the line is dropping out at the top on downstrokes. But that's significantly better than what it was. In fact, it writes now. That pen was just not even writing for me before. And just with, gee, what I spend about 10 minutes on that, I've got it writing again. So now let's see if I can get the medium to write the same way. So after two days of tuning these two nibs and two days of filming and editing the tuning, we are 20 minutes into this review and we finally start talking about the pen itself. And we're going to talk about this pen and only this pen, if I can. I'm going to try to put the last two days behind me and focus on this pen as if it just came out of the box. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this fountain pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. And please stay tuned after the writing sample when I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. The Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii. And no, that is not the longest product name. That honor belongs to Quad Long Shot Grande in a Vente Cup, Half Calf Double Cupped No Sleeve Salted Caramel Mocha Latte with Two Pumps of Vanilla Substitute, Two Pumps of White Chocolate Mocha for Mocha, and Substitute Two Pumps of Hazelnut for Toffee Nut, Half Whole Milk, and Half Brev with No Whipped Cream, Extra Hot, Extra Foam, Extra Caramel Drizzle, Extra Salt, and a Scoop of Vanilla Bean Powder with Light Ice Well Stirred which is the longest valid name that can be entered into a cash register ordering system. <sighs> Still, that's a very long name. I'm going to call it the MZ from now on. Even with a short seven-word moniker, this is one beautiful fountain pen, as we saw in the unboxing. I have to note here, not only is the acrylic resin beautiful and evocative of Hawaiian sand, there's our sand, Hawaiian sky, and Hawaiian waters. Look at how the resin seems to be segmented into stripes. It uh, gives it a faceted effect without actually being faceted. I think that's just fascinating. Stupendous. How do we come up with more superlatives? I'll have to get out my thesaurus. That guy's even scarier than a thesaurusosaurus. Tread, stomp, trudge, growl, roar, ululate, antonym, whisper. What's wrong with him? He's on the spectrum. Spectrum? In my day, we'd throw him in the army and have him play the bugle. The top of the pen is shaped in a conic point, and then the cap curves. Not tapers, it has a nice curve. Up to three gold-colored bands. And there's a fourth band there, but that's on the end of the barrel. And the barrel is straight until about here, where it tapers down to another gold-colored metal band. And then the blind cap, which ends in another conical point. The blind cap unscrews to access the unique converter inside the barrel, which we'll see in a momento. Let's look at the clip. 
The gold-colored roller clip is reminiscent of some vintage wall Eversharp fountain pens of the 1920s. It is very springy and very usable, and that roller actually does come in very handy. It's not just decorative. It helps roll it in and out of your pocket or your pen sleeve. The cap unscrews with slightly over one turn to reveal the milk bottle shaped section made of the same gorgeous acrylic resin and a number six size gold colored steel Bach nib. The nib is laser engraved with Leonardo Momento, no, Leonardo Officina Italiana and the Leonardo crest, those wings, and an M for medium on this one. And here is the plastic feed and the nib and the feed uh, collar assembly unscrews very, very easily for nib swapping. The Memento Zero comes in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 and a 1.5 millimeter stub. The extra fine, fine, medium, and broad nibs are available in 14 karat gold versions for about $215 US more. An extra steel nib will set you back about 20 bucks. That's what I did, I bought a broad, about 20 bucks. The barrel unscrews to reveal the unique Leonardo cartridge included cartridge converter, which screws into the section, which makes it that much more secure. Basically, the converter has an extra long knob, which sticks through the end of the barrel when you take the blind cap off to allow you to control the converter uh, without taking the barrel off. And this is another nice touch. The gold knob on the converter is laser engraved with Leonardo Officina Italiana. This is a standard international and will the pen will accept standard international short and long cartridges and you can piggyback one short when you've got one short in the cart in the um, section. The cap posts deeply and securely and is not heavy enough to throw the balance of the pen off. It's comfortable either posted or unposted, and I do both. I'm bi-postal. Sometimes when happy, happy story time lady reads a happy story, she gets unhappy. You see, happy, happy story time lady is bipolar. <laughs> the section on this pen is a very thick and interestingly shaped. I'm sure there are other pens with this kind of a shape, this milk bottle, as I called it, shape. But I thought originally I might not like it, but I like it a lot. Those threads are not significant at all. They're very, very rounded. And actually the threads give you that much more space of the section to grip. And I find that the curl of my middle finger fits right underneath that slight ramp right there where it narrows down and I don't find my fingers sliding off to the end because there's no flare. I find the thick body and the section of this pen very comfortable for extended writing sessions. I love the feel of this pen in my hand. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay here is the Momento Zero with a Moonman 600S a Conklin Durograph, a Jinhao Centennial, and a Pen BBS 355 improved version. Now let's look at them posted. And here we are with the pens posted. And this is pretty funny because there's only one of these five pens that actually posts where you can actually write with it. And that would be the Memento Zero. Uh, these four pens, those caps will sit on the end, but it's not secure, they'll fall off, and it's certainly not writable. Let's get a close up on these nibs. They're all number six steel nibs. Uh, the Conklin Durograph here actually has a Natami rose gold uh, nib on it that I swapped into it. And of course the Jin Hao number six. All these nibs are swappable. I can put the Pen BBS nib 
in the Memento Zero. I can take the Moon Man nib and put it into the Jinhao. They're all roughly the same size. The Natami is slightly less than a number six. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero. Say that ten times fast. All right, Sheldon, why is tap tapioca is extracted from the root of the plant monohot escalenta due to a high concentration of cyanide it is poisonous in its raw form and lethal if prepared improperly. <laughs> Feel better now? It is also indigenous to Brazil, as is the cocoa bean from which we get chocolate the best pudding, and you promised you wouldn't do that anymore. And this one is a medium steel nib. And the ink is Robert Oster. Fire and ice. Let's check the wetness here. So it's relatively wet. And let's look at the swatches. And here is the swatch for Fire and Ice with G. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal and Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. Boy, in this business, you really have to brush up on your languages, don't you? And as to line variation, that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. You're not going to get any line variation out of this. It's a fairly stiff nib, but it's not to be flexed. And our writing sample. And some quick writing. Not too many issues right now. And before we get into what I like and what I don't like about this fountain pen, if you skip the first 20 minutes of this video, now's the time to skim through it just to get a gist of what prompts my comments here. Remember, I'm not an expert. I'm a consumer, just giving my personal opinion. If this is your grail pen and you adore it and revere it, Please don't think I'm disagreeing with your opinion or crapping all over your beloved writing instrument. Good for you. Love your fountain pen and your writing experience. Kudos. This is my experience with this pen. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, let's start with the likes. This is possibly one of the most beautiful and beautifully designed fountain pens I've ever laid my hands or my eyes on. I can't believe I own this pen. And it is special to me because it is only possible because of this YouTube channel and viewers and subscribers like you that I have this pen. Thank you all so much. This is two months revenue from watching those annoying pop-up ads. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? The acrylic resin, the shape, the feel, the balance of this pen is just exquisite. But it wouldn't write. With either the medium or the broad nib that I had bought, it wouldn't write. This is a $180 US steel nib fountain pen, handmade in Italy, 
that would not write out of the box. In all the fountain pens I've reviewed since January 2019, I've only had three pens just fail right out of the box, just fail f to write. And they were all under 20 bucks. I can hear the comments already about how I should have checked the box to have Jost test and smooth the nibs before I sent them on to me. Yes, I should have checked the box. But my point is, Yoast, as a retailer, shouldn't have to do that with a steel nib pen that is handmade in Italy and costs $180 US. For that price, Leonardo should check the nibs before it goes into the box. When I buy a $300 acoustic guitar, I expect the quality control will be lacking as it rolls off the assembly line in the Philippines or Malaysia. But when I buy a Martin acoustic guitar for $5,000 US dollars, I know and expect the guitar is double and triple checked by skilled technicians in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. This medium nib not only had severe baby's bottom, it was also misaligned so much that a loop wasn't even necessary to see it. It should not have gone into the box like this. The box and the packaging and the warranty are all very nice, but with a faulty steel nib, the pen is just a high-priced nib holder. I put the Bach nib from my Moonman M800, this one, into the Momento Zero, and it worked beautifully because I wanted to write with the pen and I had two nibs that didn't write. And I also was concerned about avoiding my warranty if I had worked on the pens, worked on the nibs. I have to say a word here about Yoast Applebaum. Great prices, fast shipping, friendly and prompt correspondence. Well, that's eight words, actually. Using Stephen Brown's discount code, I got 10% off the price. And when I ordered a second nib, a couple of days after I ordered the pen, Yoast combined the shipping for me and saved me a few more bucks. In addition, Yoast gave me permission to work on the nibs myself to see if I could get them writing the way they should and promised to replace them if I failed and assured me I wouldn't avoid my warranty. That's just excellent customer service. Thanks, Yoast. Previously, I had flossed and polished nibs to get them to write better. You've seen it in some of my videos. However, I had never gone to the workbench and scraped a nib with 1500 grit micromesh before. It was a great education and I got two good writing nibs out of it. Three actually, as I improved the Moonman M800 Bach nib as well. So out of a disappointing experience with a long-awaited grail pen comes a great learning experience and a sense of accomplishment for myself. This video is very much longer than I had anticipated. I tried to avoid comparing this Momento Zero with my beloved Moonman M800 Galaxy because I'm devoting an entire video to that in the next day or two. So stay tuned for that. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote.